And that brings me to my favorite part of the SPAC Health, which is our cognitive behaviors. And that's the C in SPAC. And I have to explain to kids that cognitive is just a big word for being able to think and understand things. Um, and, but it fit in good with my SPEC idea um, of spectacular. So basically, we know that between infants and adults, we're learning a lot. We learn how the physical world works. We learn how our minds express that or represent it, and how others represent it. And we know that our cognitive behaviors definitely involve our nervous system. And what it involves is sensory information coming in. And it also involves information that's also in your brain, that ideas that you have. And basically, that helps you to produce adaptive responses. And those behaviors are three of my favorite behaviors in the whole wide world, attention, learning, and memory. And if we look, again, I'm going to try to make this brief because I could talk to you forever on this stuff. Um, but basically, attention is helping us to focus on information. That helps us to identify changes in our world, stressful events. And it involves circuits in the brain. There are three circuits in the brain. Our alerting, which helps us to increase and maintain readiness. Something's going to happen. i got to pay attention. Um, orienting. Selecting those stimuli. Your brain is constantly bombarded with stimuli. So you have to pay attention to the stimuli that are relevant, um, that are important to keeping you alive. And then our executive control, being able to take information that's competing and decide which way to go. And this is basically tied to different types of attention. Sustained attention, alternating attention, selective attention, dividing attention. Um, so these are all circuits that are in our brain that are active and they're developing. At birth, you have your orientating um, network that's already there. So that allows the infant to respond to stimuli that are out there. You've also got a brief little bit of executive control. As you get older, those networks, they're changing. Um, so but 3 to 12, all the networks are there, but they're not working as quickly as they do with adults. You know, attention spans um, tend to grow, old, grow larger as we get older, except when social media is involved. <laughs> then it goes back down. Um, by the time 18 to 59, so basically throughout your entire adult life, all of those three work networks are working, and they're working very well. They're, 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 they're working um, so that you can attend to the stimuli that is important to you, that's relevant. That tends to decrease as you get older. So that's one of the things that, as you get older, we need to teach people that as they get older, they need to change how the information comes in. Somebody may tell you something that's relevant to you, but unless you write it down, <laughs> gone. Um, so those are the kinds of behaviors we need to change. Um, and again, all of this changes over time. So attention is important, but also learning. Being able to take information from that, or knowledge from that information that we get. That helps us to acquire the information about the um, stressful event, the changing in the world. It also allows us to modify our coping mechanisms. Memory, in order for learning to take place, you have to be able to store it and then get it back, so retrieve it. So that's important. So looking at attention, learning, and memory, basically what you're doing is you're manipulating information. You're changing that information in your brain. We encode information. We store it either in short term or long term. And then we are going to retrieve it. Now, I can't even go into all of the different brain areas that are involved, all of the different theories that are involved in learning and memory. We know that whenever you go from a novice to an expert, and that's, again, it's not just when you go from pre-K to fifth grade. It's any time you undertake a new task. You're a novice. And so you have to use all these different kinds of behaviors. Beha and, and what I like about it is that these behaviors can be mapped onto Bloom's tax taxonomy, which I've al always loved the way that this is. It's mod been modified, but it just has worked forever. Um, uh, remembering things, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. We can now correlate those with 
the different behaviors that we've no also known a lot about in terms of the brain areas. So behaviorism lets you understand and remember. Cognitivism helps you analyze and apply. Connectivism helps you evaluate and create. And then connectivism, or constructionism, I'm sorry. Um, connectivism helps you to recognize and put things together, the old light bulb effect, where it's like, ah, I understand, I get it. Um, and again, there's been lots of theories of the development, Piaget, theory of mind, that basically this all increases over time. Now again, looking at brain areas, ah, there's lots. Um, lots of brain areas are involved. There are lots of different kinds of learning, lots of different kinds of memory. We know that all of these things are going to be acting on areas of the brain that are increasing neuroplasticity. We know learning is important. We know memory is important. We know being able to attend to stimuli that is, and, and, and decide whether or not that stimuli is good or bad. That's important. So basically, gives us a healthy brain. So that takes us through the tenets. Cognitive health is basically going to help keep our brain healthy, as is our social, physical, emotional, and, of course, cognitive health.